Yeah. Cheers, Sammy. Cheers, um, Jeremy. It's just lovely Great. to see you. And we cannot wait to come back to the Lebanon and visit you and the family and Messiah and your team and be with you in the, in the, in the, in the lovely Lebanon. Likewise, uh, Jeremy. Likewise. I, I, I remember in the early 2000s when Daniel Brunier um, came over and Richard and I met him for lunch and he produced a bottle of uh, what was then the classic. And mm -hmm. up to then, we hadn't really thought too much about Messiah. Then we tried, we tasted this uh, red wine that came from this place called Messiah. We looked at each other and said, gosh, that's very good. We'd, be we'd better do it before somebody else does. And we've had this wonderful relationship, relationship with you, Sammy, and Ramsey, and your family since the early 2000s. And then we had a wonderful first visit in 2006, which was a, a wonderful, memorable visit. And we're so pleased to be working with you. Um, you've created a wonderful uh, domain, a wonderful story, and how you got there is a little bit like a boy's own story, but over to you, Sammy, this is, this is, this is, this is wonderful. Oh, uh, Jeremy, thank you. It's good to see you. Good to see you all, and uh, lovely to see your hair. You, you need a haircut, Jeremy. I can, <laughs> I, I can indicate. I do, I do. Yes, yes, yes. But you know, we I... <laughs> have. Uh, I mean, if, if 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 I had my lovely wife around, she she would she would cut it for me. But uh, uh, I'll go. I'll go in a, in a, in, a, in a month or so's time when 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 the. Maybe barber, can give you a turn. When when the barbers. No, 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 no. no. I'll. I'll, I'll <laughs> I'll go to a barber in, 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 in a month, six weeks, whenever they open. Yeah, that's my last uh, time in London. John, uh, John Campbell uh, invited me out for lunch and then took me to a barber where they, they get the <laughs> hair out of, with the, they, they burn the hair from your ears. So this is a bit of uh, the last memory. Jeremy, uh, to Claudia, as you mentioned, uh, cheers to your... Uh, Lovely wife and uh, Charlie's mother and uh, her beautiful soul that looked after us uh, and looked uh, was with us in 2006. Uncle Ben as well. Yeah. And that memory uh, of this uh, beautiful visit you had with uh, John as well uh, and few friends. And thank you for your kind words. Actually, um, uh, the story of Messiah would not be uh, a story had it not been for you and your uh, wonderful uh, uh, participants that are our um, ambassadors now in the UK. We have uh, good friends, lots of uh, uh, recognition thanks to your knowledge and thanks to your uh, friends, uh, wine, um, uh, know-how, and uh, you know, they're... Now the life is all about influencers and how many followers you have on Instagram and whatnot. But with you and your generation of uh, of uh, noble people in the wine wine trade, it is it is where I like to to find myself. Uh, uh, you, you taught me a lot. Um, your uh, all your team, Richard, Martin, and everyone certainly. Them now. Um, uh, along those routes in the UK that I uh, I went uh, along so many times, and it was before the time of uh, of uh, Wi-Fi. I used to call back my office saying, uh, "Today we sold ten cases and twelve bottles here," and I was so excited about all that and finding those wonderful people. Now. Um, uh, I know you recognize this area as an area of trouble, but. Uh, we were on a on a call a couple of days back, and they asked me, uh, uh, "What did you, you know, what hurdles you've been through, or what vintages you've missed, or do you regret uh, doing what you have done, or would you, uh, would you have done it, uh, you know, differently?" Um, I think, uh, of all places, despite the troubles, I wouldn't choose to be anywhere else but uh, living in Lebanon because, in many ways, the 
the climate we have is so blessed uh, in terms of uh, in terms of wine and wine making. So certainly no regrets to the country moving forward. And you of uh, everyone can witness uh, you're visiting here. How you know it's a you can visit many wine regions uh, in in your uh, life of. Uh, being a wine merchant, but I think Lebanon influences you in many ways because it's really at the crossroads of civilizations. And this to our day, the Beka Valley is where the Romans built the temple of Bacchus, where the Phoenicians traded and took wines to the world, where the vines were planted, where we don't, uh, where we don't uh, need to irrigate or uh, play, you know, influence nature in any way to get the great wines. Uh, thank you for the, rolling those uh, pictures in the background. Um, uh, I guess uh, you will have a bit of, uh, yeah, this is tiny Lebanon, a couple of hundred kilometers in length, 50 in width, with the temples, the Baalbek temple of Bakus, the Fa'ra temples, where we have our second winery and the Beka Valley in the middle. This is the family in the 70s. Uh, my father, my mother, my sister, my brother Ramsey, who heads winemaking now, and me. That's the Beka Valley property. Um, that was in 70, this picture in black and white, that was taken in 74, the summer of 74, right before the war started in Lebanon and us having to flee the... I don't know who took his, this picture. My mother in the apron, they used to have those lunches on Sundays and invite uh, friends and we would have barbecues and Arak and that was our playground. And this is that uh, piece of land that I never wanted to leave, uh, although I had left physically Lebanon. You know, there is a saying, uh, you, can, you can travel and, and you know, emigrate but you can never take the tree under which you sit in the shadow of your youth if you move a tree it will die so I think I came back for the shades of those trees and those grapes uh, in 92 from the US claim back the land and you like me saying the story with the AK-47 Jeremy I think many of your friends that are watching have have had it uh, the story of claiming the land and staying uh, four or five months on the rooftop of our own house with uh, with the um, occupiers uh, in the in the house and also on wine and war they they said do you still have this AK-47 it showed a bit in the movie and I will not, uh, I will not, I don't want to uh, um, picture life as rosy or not rosy, but now my kids that are my age when we migrated uh, nine and 10 and my daughter 12, they know how to, how to grease and how to uh, put together the AK-47. So I don't want them to think life is, uh, uh, you know, any day things, troubles can happen here. And uh, you have also seen with your own eyes the making of Masaya Fa'ra in Mount Lebanon, where we decided to go in altitude. So it's very much respect of nature and the call of the roots that brought me back to Lebanon and the love of nature here. And I was, uh, I know you wanted to show this video with snowboarding, but we had snow this week. You, you, you might want to uh, just let the pictures scroll. This is the Beka property that uh, we recuperated from squatters, and this is how it is now, lush and green. And uh, you see this is mountain range in the back is what separates us from Syria. And that's the Beka, the Masaya Fa'ra, Mount Lebanon winery that some of you have visited. That, that was inaugurated in 2014. We've had uh, beautiful snow this season. This is my brother Ramsey and myself before uh, harvest. A great photo, back. that one, Sammy. <laughs> yeah, I don't know when this picture was taken, but we were, I guess, a bit younger. Ah. Uh, Daniel Brunier, to my right, uh, my my good friend, my family in Chateau Neuf. Um, uh, Dominique Ebrar, my partner from Bordeaux, and uh, my brother Ramsey, that's in Lebanon at the Beka Winery. It's been uh, 22 years. Uh, thanks to them, they opened doors for us, uh, particularly with you, Jeremy. Thanks to them, uh, you got to know Masayo. We're lucky to partner with the 
with French people. You know, Lebanon has a lot of French influence and we started making Arak, as some of you might know. Uh, a couple of years in the Arak making, I, I, uh, I, uh, a gentleman that sells uh, corks came to see me and I said, I'll buy from you corks if you were to uh, introduce me to winemakers from France willing to invest with me in winemaking in Lebanon. And that was Dominique Ebrard. Uh, my good friend and partner uh, that uh, came from Saint-Emilion after I visited him in uh, Cheval Blanc, his family owned Cheval Blanc and all I knew, I knew France and Bordeaux, but I had no idea what Saint-Emilion was, uh, let alone Cheval Blanc. So he's been our partners, uh, partner for since 1998. And then I met Daniel and Frédéric Brunier and... Uh, and they have been our partners. And some of the wines you get uh, come from our bonded warehouse in Chateau Neuf, and some come directly from Lebanon. So 22 years in the wine making. Amazing. Maybe we'll, we will tell your audience uh, at the 10th year's anniversary, we had Martin Slater here and few <laughs> friends from France also. We had uh, we were caught between fires. Uh, no, it wasn't. Yeah, it was uh, internal turmoil that blocked the airport. So I had to uh, fly in a jet and um, fly everyone out uh, despite the curfew on the airport uh, to Cyprus. And from Cyprus, we, we went to France, actually, where I got married at uh, Dominique's Belfond Belsier and um, our visitors had to yeah that's one of the stories you know if we if you are to count all the stories of the hurdles geopolitical hurdles in lebanon during the process of Masaya, we, we would be writing a book uh, i mean you need to also um I, I think everyone needs to hear about i, I love your knife that you carry around and, I, and I, just before you tell them um about that too because I, I always think of it as a crocodile dundee moment i have to say <laughs> when it comes out but um but I just want to mention that if anybody has any questions during the call as well for Sammy, please don't hesitate to ask during the, via the chat function as well. And um, also to make sure to be enjoying the wines. It's not a tutor tasting this evening. So crack open the bottles and make sure you're enjoying it as much as we are right now as well. So cheers to you all as well. I'm, <laughs> Sorry, uh, <back> nice. <laughs> I'm having uh, the Marseille Blanc 2019 that I think you have now in stock. And this is, uh, this we produce at the Masaya Fa'ara winery. So I'm on my second glass just in a, to, uh, of this wine. If you want to roll the pictures, we can take you through them. This uh, knife will tell a story about it went through Heathrow Airport Terminal 4, I think. And one day, Jeremy we had a lunch with uh, Hicks and he, all I knew, I had a flight after I didn't know, and the knife was in my backpack, but it made it through a cigar <laughs> tube. So uh, that's, uh, that's yeah, that... I have to say, is, <laughs> when you see it. Those are uh, our grapes in the Beka Valley. You see the seasons, um, how lush they are, and how long the, the span of the season is. We get, uh, we get the snow and the frost, uh, Snow protects the vines from frost, but all the bugs and whatever you would have to spray elsewhere passes out. And this is the morning morning fog or the dew, which which keeps them lively. That was literally last week, this picture in the Bekaa. Uh, we had about 10, 20 centimeters of snow, which is quite uh, good. It, it refreshes the soil wow. and it keeps... Uh, yeah, it keeps them moist through the summer heat. So this is why the, the Phoenicians had all that influence uh, with the grapes, because at the end of the day, 90% of the wine is the DNA of the grapes and the terroir. And I think we have a, quite an unbeatable terroir. Uh, God blessed. So nature is certainly our partner, despite the the hurricanes we live uh, due to um, due to human humankind, but certainly not nature. I mean, this time of COVID and being uh, being at home base for almost a year now, which is not really in my Phoenician DNA, not moving around, uh, got me even closer to to the soil and to the earth. That alone, spending time with the family, we've planted around. Uh, 
450 cedars in Masaya Fa'ra this year. And junipers and oak, local oak. Yeah, that's the winery in Nebeka. You can roll down the pictures if you if you wish. Um, yeah, that's the Beka winery in Tanail, where we produce the rosé, we produce the reds, be it uh, Colombier, which the wine I'm I'm moving on to now, Colombier. Yes, you know, Sammy, we had a question from Stephen of Galvin La Chapelle. He said uh -huh. he, um, he kept the rosé in the fridge, and when he opened it, it was too cold, but as it's warming up, it's... Uh, starting to open up a bit, what temperature would you recommend? For the Colombier? Uh, for the rosé. Oh, for the rosé. Wow, lucky you still have rosé. We're, 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 uh, we're in fireplace season and out of rosé till the next vintage. Uh, and I, personally, I don't like my wines too cold. Uh, I like them, uh, even the white. Uh, I don't like much. Uh, you know, I, I would I would recommend the rosé anywhere around sixteen degrees Celsius. Uh, and some people it, like it a bit colder, but we have a rosé that uh, carries a, a nice uh, fruit and tannins, so it has a body. You don't, uh, you know, you don't want to uh, uh, leave this too much the fruit behind having it too cold, but who am I to judge everyone his own taste? That's how the, I would recommend to drink it. That was literally two days ago at the winery. You see the vines are totally under the snow. Those are for the ones of you who have visited, those are the terraces. We sit on this uh, terrace and we have the, the vines beneath us overlooking the big... Can we roll back a bit uh, just yeah, to sure. show your uh, friends the black and white audio, uh, picture of the Temple of Bacchus yeah. for the ones that have uh, not here. You see, this is Mount Lebanon on the snow in the background. That was for actually our 10th anniversary. Uh, we had... Uh, this is the Daniel Brunier, my partner, came with his photographer from Chateauneuf. Cholet, and he took those pictures. This is an area, you're, that's the highest altitude mountains around the Mediterranean. You're at about, uh, about 3,700 meters here in the background uh, with year-round snow. And those are, this is the Temple of Jupiter, the Roman temple with the highest columns ever across the Roman Empire. And on the right, you see the Temple of Bacchus. Mm -hmm. This is the best preserved Roman temple in the world. And the one... Uh, for uh, Bacchus, their god of, of grapes and wine, despite um, 12 earthquakes, all sorts of invasions of the Beka back and forth, it remained, it remained standing and it's a wonderful uh, place to enjoy concerts because the acoustics in the temple are, are, are unmatchable. And up to now, they don't know how the roof was made. Uh, they think it was, uh, it was glass. Uh, because everything is preserved besides there is no roof, basically. And they used to uh, observe uh, the stars. The Beka has, and I'll get you to how this influences the grape. The, 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 the Beka has a wonderful, wonderful uh, luminosity uh, because it's a high altitude plateau nestled between two mountains. You have fresh air every afternoon funneled in from the Mediterranean, chasing away the bugs, the warm air, and all the, 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 the stars, you know, when you're there, you see this wonderful luminosity and you get the grapes leave shaking and getting all, this, all those um, influences with brings in complexity into the grapes. So the vine gets nourishment both from the, from the sun, the wind, and certainly the roots. And 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 this in this uh, dry uh, dry and warm weather, it has to dig deep to find those drops of water that were came in down thanks to the snow, and it gets through those layer different layers of minerals, and hence the minerality, the finesse, and the wines rather than full jammy wines as you would have in the new world or in places where you have a lot of sunshine, very or 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 very warm weather. We are. Uh, 
blessed with about 280 to 300 days of sunshine a year and a couple of months of, of, of serious uh, snow, rainfall and cool weather. And this, uh, the grape has to survive and sustain. You see, this is the view from Mount Lebanon, from the winery overlooking the Mediterranean. And you see the fog, this mountain here, Mount Lebanon, this is the fog and, and, and those are the, uh, the clouds coming from the Mediterranean. It's like when you're on an airplane, you oversee the clouds and the mountain works like a sponge. It kind of sponge in all, those, all this humidity and it will release it and it's clay limestone terroir it's the clay is 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 keeps the 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 humidity and it will release it let go of it uh, little by little during the maturing or during the growth of the vines and very cool nights uh, due to the influence of the syrian desert behind mount lebanon uh, the second mountain range that separates us from syria and the mediterranean influence so you get coolness very drop in temperatures at night, slowing of the maturing or of the growing of the grapes, long uh, cycles for the maturing, hence a lot of complexity. This you cannot beat anywhere. Whatever you do, you can bring uh, the best equipment, uh, you know, the finest uh, uh, winemaker and the uh, most beautiful tank. And uh, that, that, that doesn't, that, you cannot you cannot beat that this is, nature is the and, and sammy you've got, you've got a few questions popping up here um <laughs> that that people are asking and um, just one to begin with you've got one from matteo at bernard's tavern who's asking the age of the vines and the different planting systems that you use yeah the, the, uh, the, we've been planting since uh, the inception of messiah since the actually since i came back from the us in the early 90s and we still have uh, under contract uh, vines uh, from the church. The church has a lot of influence in the, in the Bika and in Lebanon owns a lot of land. Uh, the, the vines were planted, some of them with the, uh, after the First World War. You know, originally the Phoenicians brought in those, those vines and they came back with the fall of the Roman, uh, of the Turkish uh, Empire with the First World War. So we have a bit of some sensos that are 100 years old, uh, all the way down to uh, Raul uh, Vermantino, we've planted uh, 15 and 20 years ago. Uh, so uh, they average 40, 50 years, the vines. It depends on what cuvee. Le Colombier, for example, uh, uh, is, is uh, quite young vines. I mean, young. <laughs> I've planted them some uh, 25 years ago uh, now. So that's the age, and it goes all the way down uh, to Cap Est and Reserve vines that are 60, 70 years old. Yeah, this is the sunset few day, a few days ago uh, before the storm uh, from overlooking the Mediterranean. And you see again the clouds we, we were talking about earlier. Yeah. Sorry if I'm not getting all the questions. I see that. No, no, that you've I got know, quite a few. <laughs> Um, so we have another question, uh, so asking, what is the general uh, temperature and humidity conditions in your cellars? Uh, the cellars, uh, ah, oh, that's a nice picture. It came right along. Uh, the cellars uh, are totally naturally, uh, we, don't, we don't influence the temperature at all. Uh, it varies between, I think, uh, I would say, five degrees Celsius uh, during the coolness because we're about four meters here under under the rubble, under the earth, and it's all uh, digged in the rocks. Uh, and it goes up to uh, 18 degrees Celsius in August. Uh, this the, Those stones you see, uh, they were all digged from the from the from the place itself. It was uh, the stones when we when we uh, just build the, the, the winery and, uh, and they kind of uh, cool uh, and, and, and keep the heat during the, the winter. It's, it's naturally, and the, the wines, the one I was having, the Blanc, uh, is, is vinified in those uh, demi muis All those uh, that you see come from our uh, French uh, 
partners, uh, uh, tonnelier, the same tonnelier that... Uh, uh, and, and thinking about the white, um, what do you think about, you've got a question here about the potential aging of the white from Jonathan Sutton, from Sutton's Ellis. Yes, yes. Hi, John. Uh, the, the, we, we, we're, uh, we're not in a big, uh, I would say, this, this cellar, those, those cellars, you see, you have more pictures of the cellars if you might want to roll them. You will see that uh, we have a lot of uh, wines that are uh, maturing here. Um, those are red wines that we produce in the Beka and we sell it in altitude at Fa'ra on Mount Lebanon. Uh, predominantly uh, the Cap Est, some of the Terras, uh, and those are, this is the wine here where we produce the white, those are the, the foudre. Uh, all the white uh, is made in foudre and demi mui uh, We sell it the reds, we have reds that uh, since 98. For the whites, I would say within three uh, to five years, uh, we drink them. And mm -hmm. luckily, we're not uh, left with much stock of neither the white nor the rosé nor the red. Year on year, we set out. We, we were uh, wise enough to keep a bit of the red wines uh, in, um, in, uh, during the years since the beginning of Masaya and those we are tasting now, we have wines that are really open up beautifully now from the, that are 15 years, uh, 18 years, um, that are now starting to, to bring more and more uh, of their uh, beauty. I know in the UK, you have a bit of influence from our wonderful colleagues, uh, Musar, that, uh, that can, uh, you know, enhance this, uh, uh, vintage uh, in their uh, communication. Um, uh, we 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 don't have much uh, uh, of the same in our approach. Uh, certainly not on the white, nor the rosé, but more on the reds uh, that are bringing complexity, bringing maturity to the to the to the palate. I wouldn't. I, I cannot venture much more in in regards to the whites. So we 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 tend to go to the more the minerality, the fruit that is that is from fresher wines rather than aged wines in the white, I would say. Sammy, this is the best white I've tried ever of, of, from the sire. Thank you, Jeremy. I mean, the, the, the compliment will go straight to Ramsey. Uh, Leonie will see to that. Uh, the white... Uh, We've we've done quite nicely with the, with the idea of uh, of going up in altitude, planting higher up, and uh, building the fa'ra uh, on Mount Lebanon winery. We we found that in the Beka Valley floor, it's not it wasn't high enough, not cold enough to go into the into into the whites like we ventured. Thank you. Yes, we, we've been having quite a, a, a claim around our white wines. Mm -hmm. I'm not much a person of, of uh, points, and, but you cannot dismiss matters. Uh, vine pair in the U.S. among 50 top wines of 2020, they selected the Masaya Blanc. I think it came in the 12 or 15th. And in the reds, Robert Parker, that's very much U.S. as well. I know... Mm -hmm gave uh, the reserve the highest uh, grade ever on the Eastern Mediterranean for a red 94 points also last year. So I think Ramsey has done and the team are doing quite a beautiful job. That's great. On the right, we have a question from Jonathan Fletcher. Mm -hmm. um, he says, I'm really enjoying your wines. My first time tasting Obidi. What can you tell me about the grape variety? Yes, uh, John. Uh, the the Obedi is is survived phylloxera in Lebanon uh, because it was uh, widely planted. It was used mainly uh, in our uh, Christian uh, church rituals for the ma for the mass, for uh, and especially for making arak. Because um, uh, Lebanon, to tell you a bit a bit of history around that note. Lebanon endured 450 years of Ottoman influence and our lovely neighbors and friends, the Turks, were not very open-minded on, on wine, neither wine drinking nor wine making. So they uprooted 
or forced us to uproot most of the vineyards, uh, us as Phoenicians. Nevertheless, we fought this back and kept on making wine in the hiding in the mountains. And Obedi uh, was uh, a bit with other, a couple of graves, Merweh, and uh, were, uh, were uh, uh, pivotal for the survival of winemaking in Lebanon. Uh, especially for the for the church and for the people, uh, because they started preserving the wine, distilling it with anise and making the arak uh, in the mountains to be able to drink and uh, and to be able to and so so Obedi was widely planted and it was uh, grapes that survived Philoxera and remained here because most of the other grapes that you get in our wines, be it the reds, the like the Sasso, the Carignan. Um, even the Tempranillo we discovered was brought all the way to Spain by the Phoenicians were reintroduced by the monks and the church and the allies, the British, the French, the, when they, with the fall of the, of, the, of the Turkish Empire with the First World War. So that's a, that's a iconic uh, varietal for Lebanon, the Obedi. Uh, because it, in in many ways, it it kind of uh, says our story. Uh, what it brings to the, I know that some say it's the ancestor of Chardonnay. It's true. It brings in a bit of uh, b- buttery taste to the to the wine when you have it with Sauvignon Blanc, as we have it in our blend. But w- we have Chardonnay, and we 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 vinify in in Barcelier every fat on its own. It's not a Chardonnay, it's a bit uh, different, but uh, it brings in, I think, this mellowness, the, it, it brings in this laid back uh, to the wine that is uh, that is very oriented to it. Um, yeah, we skipped the beautiful bottle of Arak I saw, huh? we skipped the blue bottle. <laughs> we'll have a drink of Arak after that. Um, I'm trying to remember where it was. I think it was Panama or Barbary, which they make the best cocktail that we had together. Mm. Um, it was Panama. It was beautiful. I wish I had the recipe for it. I need yeah. to. I need to contact them. <laughs> if, if Kasha could just type it in for everyone, that'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'd be very helpful. <laughs> but um. Je peux me verser un verre de and there was a question earlier whether it's Michael in the background, Sammy. Um, yes. <laughs> Yes, hi. Uh, I know we can look at the chats. You know, I'm not huge in uh, with the uh, technology. Yeah, do you want uh, to see a few more of the questions? Um, you've, you've got I'd questions. love to see the questions. At least uh, yeah. we so, recognize some of the names okay. and our good friends in the UK. You know, we've it's, got one it's... from Blaze here. One from Blaze um, saying, "What, in your opinion, is the best vintage you have produced um, so far across the board on all wines?" Blaze Le Mesurier. Yes. My good friend Blaze, it's the vintage where we, we, we got down this, those crows in your backyard. That's my best vintage. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just interject there? Is, um, <laughs> um, I, I think every year your wines have got better and better. And um, I think it's really for the customers. This is, you shouldn't be listening to this, but when, you, when one is asked which is your best vintage, they get better and better every year. Thank you, Jeremy. Uh, uh, 2019, I think, Blaze uh, is a great vintage. Uh, luckily, here we don't have that much vintage variation. Uh, we don't, you know, we're not, uh, we sometimes we're harvesting in parallel to our uh, partners in France, and, you know, they cannot. This is my son here serving me a glass of Arak, so he. he <laughs> but, <laughs> it's we, we happening on remote control. Say hi, uh, means say hi to us. Hi. <laughs> hi. <laughs> hi. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> thanks. Um, vintage variation isn't very, um, very, uh, imp- I, I, I'm not going to say not very important. There is vintage variation. Uh, certainly, as Jeremy was saying, our v- wine making. Uh, gets better because actually of knowledge and all this uh, white hair. I'm, I'm almost turning like Jeremy now. But luckily I'm, I'm, I still I'm have some. 
it's it has a lot to do with the the fact that you are able to um, to uh, uh, you know Lebanon has this in it. it 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 weathered the storms in terms of winemaking. Nineteen was wonderful. Uh, discussing with my partners, sometimes that are unable to harvest. Here we say, let's harvest this parcel on Tuesday. We go out and harvest. They they can have uh, they can have uh, rain and they can have uh, grill. I don't know how you say in. In English, they you know sometimes they they lose their harvest because of the climate, uh, um, you know, uh, indulgence or whatever is is happening. Where, whereas here we are, we are. My brother likes to say we are lazy winemakers. You leave the grape, you uh-huh. leave the vine, and it it really expresses itself. The less you interfere, the better off you you are. And this is what we've tried, uh, what we've learned through the year is just being laid back a bit. Uh, and Ramsey is, is never really in a hurry for things, which is great. <laughs> and, and as long as you can hold your horses, uh, you, you co- do quite well. And I think this is what we're able to do now, Jeremy. That's why you say the vintage is, is better. Um, 2019, what you have now or is, is actually wonderful. Even... With the rosé, we have rosés that can last a couple of years uh, uh, beautifully because there also the complexity. It's not a, a pinkish uh, juice. It's a rosé that sustain our cuisine, which is influenced by parsley and lemon and mint and olive oil and, and all those tastes and aubergine and tomatoes that are, have acidity. They're not easy to, to, you know, to grasp around the wine. While you get the Masai Rosé, be it 18, 17, or 19, and you see it cut through it, it cuts through food, and actually you've, you've experienced this uh, at Toroman Hunt with your, with your uh, Mediterranean-influenced cuisine restaurants. We, we have uh, uh, very good support in, in many restaurants. I'm not going to name uh, all of them, not to, uh, but I, places you've taken me. And lastly, Charlie, we had... Uh, wine dinner and the tasting and and you you see how how the rosé is there i would say the wine of uh, the center wine and also the taras the balbak our our gsm plays a beautiful role because it goes beautifully well from from vegetables all the way to to uh, braise the um, uh, pork or or lamb and 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 the Colombier certainly is 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 uh, the, the door opener to to the beca and to what Masai is about. So no, not much, uh, not much uh, vintage uh, variants, uh, Blaze. But uh, thank you, Jeremy, for saying 2019 is is a great vintage. Yes, indeed, and hopefully you will discover 2020 as being uh, one of of quite. Uh, good standings as well. And, and Sammy, there's um there's a question about your tempranillo, but just before going on to that, um, if you could go over as well, along with this question, just the 19s, kind of the red, white, and um, and Rose, a bit like you were, but kind of just saying about the different grape varieties that are in your wines mm-hmm. and, um, and, kind of, and, and just explaining about that as well and the different areas that they come from, like you were touching on a bit before, it'd be great to, but there's, about the Tempranillo specifically, um, Remy at the Gavroche is just asking if you could remind him where you got your Tempranillo from originally. Yeah, we had uh, we had uh, uh, a chap that worked with us uh, some years back that trained and worked in Spain, and he said one day we had a parcel. We we acquired a parcel next to the winery in Tanail. And he said, uh, "Would you would you like to try the tempranillo?" I said, "Well, what is, is this grape?" He said, um, "He, you know, it was it was planted by the by the by the Phoenicians in Spain, and we researched it and and we planted tempranillo, and actually it we we came to discover that it it does beautifully well in in the Beca, superbly well. It's the one that one of the grapes that is the least." Uh, demanding it is very it's very modest it's very resilient and it has beautiful fruit and it kind of transformed our colombia so it's um, it's one of the 
uh, it's one of the grapes in our single vineyards. You know, the reds now are Colombier, after Classique, Terrasse, um, after Silver, and uh, Cap Est, uh, certainly for the uh, northeast vineyard we have on, on the mountain range that separates us from Syria. So you are uh, talking about three single vineyards, and Tempranillo is a, a center element of the, of the, of the Colombier. And we, we have a question from Akos. He says, hi, Sammy. We had a great dinner, wine dinner, in the Four Seasons Ho Hotel, Hampshire. My question is, what is the oldest bottle that you keep in your cellar? <laughs> <laughs> uh, of Masaya? Or, uh, both, I guess. <laughs> it's not limited. Yeah, to, to be honest, I'm, I'm not the perfect uh, host to ask this question to because I drink the wines I get. So, <laughs> <laughs> so um, uh, Leonie has a better grasp of the wines we keep because you know, we, are, uh, we are safeguarding some to, uh, to long-time Messiah supporters and to good friends. And she's, uh, she's keeping uh, the books per se on that front. But uh, yes, we, we're certainly still tasting. Our 98 is, uh, we've had a couple, a uh, few days back. And whenever we have uh, friends, visitors like yourselves and or our partners, we, we tend to open uh, older bottles. We have uh, uh, bottles that are, you know, tasting beautifully well. I remember, I remember our good friend, uh, Tim at his times at Fortnum's, he, he had selected at the Merchant Taylor's Hall, uh, the reserve, Jeremy, if you recall, and we were, uh, it was, I think, the 99, if I'm not wrong, or the 2000, maybe, that was at, at Fortnum's. I was so proud, uh, you know, being at Fortnum's with a bottle of Messiah and doing a tasting and... Uh, I had a friend that was deputy in parliament, happened to be in London. He came, helped me with my first pouring. It was unbelievable. And uh, yeah, and one day walking the streets of London, I was just with my backpack thinking, one day this Arak bottle will make it to the shelf. And uh, after a few months, it was on the shelves of, uh, thanks to you, Jeremy, of, uh, of also one of the big stores. And honestly, I don't want to be, Talking of stores here, not there, or uh, you mentioned Four Seasons, yes, uh, I remember. But uh, we also had it at uh, Harvey Nichols, the, the, the Messiah Iraq. I must say that the UK, you know, Jeremy, you speak uh, highly of us, of Messiah, of our story. You have, uh, you're a great uh, ambassador of so many wonderful uh, vignerons. Uh, uh, in France and elsewhere, in Italy and so forth. But uh, it is, uh, in, I must say, in humbleness, it is the UK where I have my cousins, where I have very good friends, where I have a family, uh, because you're part of our, all of you, bigger family, is the, the, the market that put us, put really Massa on the map. Uh, one day, uh, Tim was telling me, you have very good deep roots here. I, I wanted to, to thank before we, we finish our, our, uh, our discussion, uh, this wonderful market of yours and the support we have received with the blast of August 4th that uh, wiped out uh, half the capital of Beirut. And uh, a lot of people lost their lives, their homes and all of that. We, we, at our level of Masaya, uh, offered a bottle of uh, wine with every bottle of Arak or uh, just just to try to, to help in a way and you supported with a, with a program helping the Red Cross of Lebanon and, and certainly uh, we have received so much uh, message, so many messages of support and, and many people have uh, pulled a Lebanese wine bottle from the shelves and went to their merchants asking for Lebanese wine uh, in order to help us. And that was really, really heart, heart uh, warming and welcome. And I wanted on behalf of our compatriots and of our friends to thank you during this webinar for the, those thoughts 